happy Friday. I have no idea what time it is. Oh, please, hold on. It is two o'clock, two o'clock. I have been sitting here all morning getting some content ready for you guys. When I tell you that I am high off makeup swatches and not like in an illegal kind of way, I just mean like so much, so much happy chemicals, so many happy chemicals in my brains and my heart right now from new makeup products, from the <laughs> that's on my face, Whew, I forgot the power of makeup. Do you guys remember the reason I started on YouTube was because I wanted to find my pretty from the outside in. I wanted a distraction from my tumultuous private personal marriage life. And I focused on something that I could control and I focused on something that made me smile and something that made me happy to look at myself. And I don't know, just helped me fall in love with myself again. And I think today and moving forward is, is like the 2.0 version of that. You know, I'm not in a tumultuous marriage. I am not trying to find my pretty from the outside in. I'm just trying to find something that makes me smile right now because we've been through some dark and gloomy times and knock on wood, but uh, we've had we've we've <laughs> we've had a good week. So we're just focusing on the good and the silver lining and falling in love with new makeup products. Like you know what I mean? Like, what, what is Look at all this. Look at all this happiness. Look at it. Am I being dramatic? Perhaps, but look at this. Look at this. Like, my lips aren't normally this enormous. Okay, they're regularly pretty big, but like this big? Mm -mm. It's that new makeup by Mario lip balm, whatever thing. The Amazon. We've been doing some retail therapy and it's really been helping me with my feelings. <laughs> Before we get into the weekend vlog, I did want to say thank you to Misen for sponsoring this weekend vlog. Misen, I, I think besides the fact that I'm like ridiculously over the top in love with your cookware, I think another reason is that it rhymes with Neeson, like my husband Liam Neeson. So it just, just saying the brand Mizen just makes me smile, you know? And you know what else makes me smile? Amazing cookware and awesome knives. So we'll get into that at some point this weekend. I don't think we really have like a, a laid down plan. I said that last weekend and then I was like, oh crap, I'm wrong. I forgot everything we need to do. So this weekend is our delayed Valentine's Day celebration. And let me tell you guys how romantic we are. So Parker asked me point blank, do you want to celebrate Valentine's Day? And I was like, no. And it was very direct because, you know, grief and stress and burnout, mental load, like everything. And I was like, no, I don't want to celebrate Valentine's Day. Who has time for that? But I bought him a backpack, a backpack he wanted. And I told him that I wanted an espresso. So here's the plan. There is an espresso store in Dallas. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to a physical store like the olden days to look at them in person and bring one home. You know what else is cool about that is they have all the pods there. So I could be like, I want something that's like hazelnutty, toffee nutty, like not super dark and smoky. I don't like that. And I could just describe like a moron and they could tell me which flavors to get. So I find that very exhilarating. And then Mateo and Daniel start baseball. So we're having their very first practice this weekend. So we might head out to that for a little while. But all in all, I don't anticipate it being a super busy weekend for us. Parker is actually going to Louisiana to pop in on his mom to make sure she's doing well. And I'm not sure if he's leaving Sunday or Monday and he's going totally by himself. Usually he takes either me or the girls or goes with his brother, but he's just gonna kind of pop in, take care of some business for her and stuff like that. But what I do know is this ladybird, this mama bear is gonna get a break because there are no kids this weekend. None, not even a little one, not half of one, not a teenage one, not a little boy, nothing. No babies, just my pups. That's it, that's enough, that's enough. That's enough loving. I don't need human babies all the time. So that'll be exciting. It'll be a nice little way to just reconnect with Parker with all the stress and drama we've been having and also to reconnect with the dogs and really just get a break from having to go upstairs. <laughs> from having to go to the child floor of the house. And uh, that's it. 
I think that's it. So you guys wanna hear something funny? So I posted on Instagram, I was like, hey, I'm planning on doing Easter baskets this year. Let me add a disclaimer. We are Catholic. We know the true purpose of Easter. We also know the true purpose of Christmas. But that still does not stop us from talking about the fat man going down the chimney and the chocolate bunny whose ears I like to eat first. You know what I mean? So coming from a Mexican Catholic household that didn't celebrate any of those things, I'm kind of living vicariously through my own kids when I celebrate because I think it's exciting. <laughs> you know, the way I look at it is if you're not taking away from the meaning, like if you're still teaching the true meaning of Christmas and Easter, then what's a basket of candy and trinkets gonna take away from, you know, from that? Like what, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cause harm. It's just gonna create memories. So anyway, I posted on Instagram and I was like, hey, I need your guys' recommendations. Like if you have boys, young boys, like under 10, what do you put in their baskets? And so a lot of you guys left the best recommendations. So many good places for me to start. So I started to kind of collect a few little Amazon things for my kids. Let me show you. So you know Mateo and Daniel. Daniel's actually turning seven in March. So here's a few things that I've ordered so far. This is play foam, which I think won't be as triggering as like slime or Play-Doh. <laughs> Maybe I could be wrong, but this is like little foam, like foam Play-Doh that has like a surprise hidden inside. So I thought Daniel would enjoy that. And then you guys know Mateo's like hardcore into baseball. Daniel's about to start. He has no idea if he's going to like it. And then I gave Mateo my broken Apple Watch. He doesn't know that it's broken. Don't tell him. So he uses my broken <laughs> Apple Watch. It just gets like the date and the time, but that's it. Like he doesn't get text messages or anything like that. It doesn't work. So I got him an Apple Watch band that has like a baseball, a little baseball fidget. Isn't that cool? I, honestly, like I don't think these, I, I think this is probably more anxious, like anxiety inducing than actually helpful, but whatever, it's fun. <laughs> Look at this water bottle. How cool is this? Isn't that pretty? But that'd be a cool little basket stuffer. Anyway, we'll obviously fill it with like candy and stuff, but I did get a lot of comments that said, well, I did get a lot of comments that said, that's not the meaning of Easter. But aside from that, I did get a lot of comments that were like, oh, we focus on uh, getting ready for summer. So they get bubbles and a neat, like new swim trunks or a rash guard or new goggles or like pool toys. And I was like, that's actually brilliant because <gasps> Ernie has something to share. Did she trigger any of your dogs right now? Because Easter's actually mid-April this year, so that's like basically almost warm weather. So if they wanted to jump in the pool or if we needed to heat it up, like it would totally, totally be useful. So if I find any like cute pool, pre-summer, get ready for outdoor activity kind of stuff, I'll make sure to show you guys that in another vlog. But for now, do you wanna see the aftermath of what just happened? So I was filming a few videos. Oh, this is the aftermath right here. Oh my goodness. The aftermath is this handsome little boy. He's my little cinnamon rolls. Oh, oh yeah. Why are you so handsome, my cinnamon rolls? Look at this roll. Oh, that's my favorite roll. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, 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 look at, look at this. Oh, 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 that's nice. Sorry, I got distracted. But ADD, that's why I burned this candle. If any of you guys are grown-ups with like focusing problems, the crescent pose scent from the good candle will miraculously it it's it feels a little like if i'm honest with you guys it feels a little like witchcraft like there's no way that a candle is helping me focus but thanks to this candle if i light it and i have it going while i'm filming i could knock out three four or five videos but i have to cut myself off so that i have different makeup looks in the videos you know what i mean but the scent of this is like a very herby spa eucalyptus kind of scent so it's not like oh girly flirty feminine cute whatever no it is a strong scent but when i tell you it keeps me on track so yeah we had sort of like a of stuff that happened and uh oh i have it over here too <laughs> crescent pose 
coming at me in two directions, let me tell you. Oh, look at it, let me show you this. So I got some jewelry at my uh, P.O. Box the other day, including, I don't know if you guys have noticed, y'all are the best. When I tell you that you send me the most thoughtful, important, memory-making, significant gifts, like, y'all blow me out of the water. So look at these little earrings from Levi. She made me these little earrings, aren't they cute? We got lips and donuts. I, I'm a little biased towards the donuts, if I'm honest with you guys. I totally forgot to wear them in a video today, so I'll have to film probably again on Sunday or maybe Monday when Parker's in Louisiana. So I love those. I think she has a um, crafted by Levi. I think it's an Etsy shop. So I'll link it if it is. And then you guys have heard me talk about Lotus before their little online shop. So it has the Turkish eye and the Hamza, which I love. Little Lotus logo, and then look at these earrings. Oh, aren't those pretty? So pretty, excited to wear that. I've like really been like overdoing the gold recently, so this is like perfect timing. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Perfect timing, ladies. Appreciate you guys so much. But that's the scoop. It's two o'clock. Uh, Parker and I are gonna go eat dumplings. We're hoping that we catch that restaurant that I mentioned before open today. I think they open at five, maybe four. But here's the thing. I want to go check out that restaurant to try their soup dumplings because Samantha, my biferoni bestie of my entire life, is coming to visit me March 31st. First, put it in your calendars, get excited. So we both have had major losses. And I texted her the other day and I was like, I need something to look forward to. I need something in my calendar. I need a countdown. I need some, I need to know that I am going to be able to run away, restore myself, heal my heart, and see you somehow. And she's like, do you want me to come visit? March 31st works out really great for me. And I was like, what, did you just, did you just pull that date out of your <laughs> So we talked about going to Florida, we talked about going to Vegas, like all the options. And she's like, no, you know what? Let me come to you, which it always ends up working that way. So we're gonna have a girls weekend. Parker's actually going to go visit his mom that weekend. So it'll just be the two of us. And I was telling Sam, I'm like, this will be the perfect opportunity for you to meet Irma, my neighbor, and uh, my surrogate best friend. And she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, Sam, don't worry. I already talked to Irma and I told her that she will never, ever replace you. And she's like, good, because I was afraid I was going to have to have that conversation myself. <laughs> and the funny part is that Irma has a best friend too in another state. So she had that conversation with her friend too. <laughs> so we're like, look, in your absence, in that desperate need for connection or a pedicure, like we just protect each other. But my heart, you know where my heart is. My heart is with you. <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited to see her. I just, I needed that thing in my calendar. You know, I needed that countdown. I needed, I needed that little bit of, of my best friend and that girl time. And so just knowing she's coming in a few weeks is just mm, so excited. Maybe not so much for Wesley. Did you hear him grunt? <laughs> you guys, five o'clock. Listen, just a few things. I could have made a better fashion choice. I know this, but I've made worse ones. So if you look at the grand scheme of things with everything that's going on, like social climate, like is my pimp coat really that much of a problem right now? It's actually very warm and I really like it. And I feel like Bane, okay? The other thing is, this lip balm, it's from Makeup by Mario. If it wasn't so stinking minty, I would say run and get it. But you can't because it's sold out everywhere. But it's like insanely, ridiculously minty. And I think it's because it's plumping. But like, what are we gonna learn? Like, I would much rather have my lips burn because of like chili oil. <laughs> from some dumplings that I ate, then some minty lip balm. These kind of remind me of those maracuja click pens from Tarte, same kind of texture, same formula, same color, same style, except 
really minty. Those are minty too, aren't they? Or they smell like coconut. They're not, they're not like this. This is a little like, if you breathe in, it's like you have a mint in your mouth. <laughs> You're welcome for the demonstration. And the last thing is, okay, well this is the second to last thing. It's my, this is my husband and his Henley. Does he look handsome? He just got a haircut too. Did you get the sideburns right this time? <laughs> Brandon, a few days ago, was like, why are sideburns two different lengths? <laughs> like, what? How do you even notice that? They were like, like an inch difference. I didn't even notice and I sleep next to the man every night. Anyway, we've recovered from that trauma. The last thing that I want to tell you guys, and this is obviously why I'm being so com like comedic. Comedian? Comedic? Com is comedic a word? Comedic? I just say funny. Funny. <laughs> but then it just sounds so simple. That's okay. Simple's okay. <laughs> so the reason I'm trying to be so funny right now is because we got Sophia's test results. If you saw last weekend's vlog, one of the last things I left you with was, we're waiting for her test results, something's wrong with her liver, we don't know what it is, but we'll know on Tuesday. Huh, no we won't. So her ultrasound was on Tuesday, which my poor little baby had to fast for, and uh, the results came in three days later. So today is Friday. She had her test on Tuesday, today were the results. Y'all are waiting on bated breath, and I'm just making this longer than it needs to be. So she has, Vacular hepatopathy. No idea what that means. All I know is the vet said it's not bad, it's not terminal, and we just have to monitor it. So, later today, when I go down the rabbit hole of Google, you'll need to take it away from me. story of his life. Present, not present. So I'll need you guys to take Google away from me because I'm probably gonna go down the rabbit hole of the Google and down the rabbit hole of the Google is gonna be like liver failure, liver transplant, life expectancy, two minutes, you know? So I haven't, I haven't looked it up. I just, I wrote it down because I was like, there's no way I'm gonna remember this. And I just remember the doctor saying it's no big deal. Let's redo her blood work in three weeks and see what happens. He said, there's no reason why we should baby her liver right now. I think that just means go back to business as usual, maybe. She's on a special diet right now, but I think I'm gonna keep her on it for now, at least until we redo her blood work. She seems okay. She had a little bit of barfy vom on Monday, but she hasn't since, but she's still not that little vivace, vi vivace, vivacious, sassy little magoo she normally is. So that kind of worries me a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, she's 14. <laughs> You really got to think about spacing out your, your pets in the future. You know what's, what's keeping me strong? The, uh, the hope and, and the anticipation of perhaps getting the most delicious soup dumpling I've ever had in my life in my mouth.
so tired, I'm slurring my speech. You know, it wasn't even like I have a cool, exciting story to share, like this Chinese restaurant was BYOB. We didn't know that until we got there, so. No excitement has been had except the amount of sodium I've consumed, and I have zero regrets. So, if you guys are local and you go to Dumpling House in Frisco, it is really good. It is good like Kitchen Master, very similar. They're soup dumplings, I would say like eight out of 10, very good, just like Kitchen Master. The eggplant, like the spicy garlic eggplant, is the best I have ever had, and I get that everywhere I go. It is phenomenal. The combination fried rice, amazing. The two things that I was like, I'll come back here, but I won't try again. The beef noodle soup was super bland, like it was kind of flat. There was no like umami to it. And when it's like a hearty beef stew like that, you really want a lot of complexity. It was pretty lame, it was kind of flat, uh, like, like single dimension kind of flavor. Um, I wouldn't get that again. And the um, onion pancakes, like the scallion pancakes, they were super bland as well. There was like no scallions in them. It needed salt, it was kind of lame. But other than that, the food was delicious. I would definitely go back and just get a bunch of new different options. Super yummy. We just got home and Parker fed the dogs. So they're kind of like just hanging out. And I think that's it for this Friday. Tomorrow, Mateo has his very first baseball practice. And then we are going to have our little belated Valentine's Day where we're very romantic and I get an espresso. So, I mean, if that's something that sounds very exciting to you, I think you might want to stick around for that because, you know, we might get crazy. I might get two Nespresso pod flavors. You don't know. <laughs> Hey guys, happy Sunday. It's about 7 a.m. So I took a break yesterday. We were all over the place. Like we didn't have a plan, but somehow we managed to be all over town at many different times. We got up super early. We ran over to Mateo's very first baseball practice and met the coach and everyone on his team. And it was pretty fun. It's also kind of exciting because for this season, a uh, co-parent or their dad is going to be like assistant coach. So. It'll be really fun to see how his relationship develops with baseball just because his dad's going to be involved like every step of the way. So that'll be interesting. And then we went all the way to North Park Mall, which is like, I don't know, far from where we live. And the whole point of that was to go to an espresso store. We thought... We thought that going into the store would be sort of like an experience where we would walk in and be like, we don't know anything about the machine. We don't know anything about how this works. Can someone please advise us? And it was such a weird experience. A customer that was in line with us actually ended up helping us way more than the store itself. So I think we just picked a wrong day to go to the store, you know, like I don't think, I can't possibly fathom that at a mall like North Park, they train their associates to be that way. And so I don't wanna complain about the associates or the store, I honestly think that it was like a weekend, people are busy, it's just the wrong time to go, and if you wanna be babysat on buying a machine, you gotta do it during the week, maybe, or when it's not peak hours. So basically you walk into the store and they're like, what do you need? And we're like, oh, uh, we wanna buy a machine. Cause we, we kinda like walked in and we were walking in towards the machines and they like intercepted us. And they're like, what do you need? And we're like, oh, I'm gonna buy a machine but we don't know what we want so we kinda wanna look. Maybe you can help us. And he's like, well, I'm like really busy right now. I'm like watching the front of the store. But kinda look around and if you have any questions, just kinda flag me down and I'll come and help you. So we were like, uh, okay. We walked in and kinda looked and it was weird because the machines all look different, but the cost is almost the same, and all the descriptions almost look the same. So like, the we were stuck between two, and the price was identical, they looked significantly different, and they brewed the same four cups, the same four amounts of coffee. So we're like, well then what's the difference? So Parker's like, you know what, to heck. To heck with this, let's just get in line and we'll buy the coffee here, and then we'll buy a machine online. So we stood in line, and when we get, we get to the front of the line, which doesn't matter what you need there. If you wanna buy a coffee, if you wanna buy coffee pods, if you wanna buy a machine, y'all have to get in the same line. So we get in line, 
and we get this uh, really cute associate, her name was Veronica, and she's like, hey, what do you guys need today? And I'm like, a machine, but we have no idea what we want. But we had already spoken to someone in line with us that was like, oh, I have my family four, we use it every day, and this is the one we love. So we were kind of inclined on, on picking that one. So we told her, we're like, oh, we think we want this one. And she's like, oof, we only have red. And I'm like, you know, a little sign somewhere. <laughs> Because they didn't even have the red machine out. The models that were out on display were black and gray. So we just figured we'd pick one of those. She's like, oh, we only have red right now. So I'm like, darn it. Okay, so how about this one? She's like, oh, I have to check. So she goes, she comes back. She's like, yeah, I have the gray and the black. I'm like, okay, we don't know anything about flavors. All I know is I don't like fruity or smoky coffee. I don't want my coffee to taste burnt and I don't want it to taste fruity. I like it to taste sort of like nutty, caramelly, uh, creamy or milky. Malty, those are like the flavors that I like for coffee. And so she's like, well, they're here. And she like gives me this like acrylic, it's like an acrylic menu and they're all listed there. And so I was like, well, which ones are your favorite? Well, I mean, I tried this one last week and it was good. And I'm like, okay. Does the machine come with like a variety pack? And she's like, usually they do, but we ran out of those. So I'm gonna give you these two sleeves. So she gave us, I think Mexico and Peru, which one was a coffee, one was an espresso. And so I was like, oh, okay, uh, let me try this one. Oh, let me try this one. Hey Parker, which one do you want? We were kind of making fun of each other. We're like, the blue one, <laughs> I want the brown one. And so it was just, it's a lot more overwhelm. It's a, the concept of Nespresso is significantly much more seemingly confusing than it actually is. But I think that if they had a trained associate in the store that said, you know what, I'm super busy right now, but if you look, on the boxes of the pods or an actual pod itself, it will tell you if this is an espresso, a double espresso, um, a long pour, or a coffee. And that just means really small and concentrated, this, this, and this. And then if you look on the packaging of the pod, it'll tell you if it recommends that you froth, you know, you do froth on it or foam, or if you do warm milk, it'll be like a cappuccino or a latte, whatever, you know? Super busy right now, but just peek on the box. That usually helps a ton. And for us, like when Parker and I came home, I think we were disillusioned by the experience at the store, but we were even more disillusioned when we started to brew at home because we had no idea what the heck we were doing. So needless to say, yesterday was a day of like first times experiences, you know, meeting Mateo's new team, the coach, experiencing an espresso. It was just a lot happening. So we just came home and we sat on the couch and ate pizza. Yesterday was supposed to be a romantic makeup Valentine's Day. That didn't happen. The mall was obnoxious like it always is. I was telling Parker, I was like, I haven't been to this mall in years. And I don't like coming to this mall because they follow me. Like security follows me. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that not a lot of minorities visit this mall unless it's a busy weekend. So Parker's like, don't worry, you got me with you. I was like, whatever. First time you have an advantage. <laughs> Usually the advantage is me at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> so yeah, we just came home and we were like, F this. We drank like six espressos, okay? Six espressos yesterday. So my stomach hurts today. <laughs> but that's not gonna stop me from brewing another one. Let me show you guys the machine we got. It's actually a first generation because it's all they had in stock. It's like, is this, a, is this an iPhone? <laughs> Nespresso, are you an iPhone? Because we got a first generation, but so far we really like it. So the concept of Nespresso is for you to be able to brew espresso-like drinks at home, right? And so this is the one we got. It's the Virtuo, but it's like the Virtuo, just the classic, not the plus, not the this, not the whatever. It's just the standard one. So it doesn't have that little lever that the newer ones have. And the way that they did the series two, just kidding, the, the newer generations is they don't have this footing here. This is all empty. And then the tank is like a little cylinder. It kind of looks like this and it swivels behind it. So it minimizes the space that it takes up. But I mean, it's pretty small. You can tell I rearranged our little coffee bar. That's a regular coffee maker. That's a Keurig and that's the uh, Nespresso. And it's still really small. So I don't know, I'm kind of digging it. And if you want to do like a little espresso mug, you just move this little guy up. If you're going to do like a long pour or a coffee and you want to use a Yeti or like a tumbler, you just pull this out and stand it up in here. So, I mean, it's 
pretty useful. The one thing that we didn't realize is how loud it was. But obviously, I mean, it's an, it's an espresso machine, so like the coffee's pretty compact in these little pods. Don't judge me, we ordered some organizers and they're gonna arrive today and I'm super excited. So we got this little grid for our K-cups and then this little foam holder for the pods. So if you guys aren't familiar with Nespresso, all of the pods have like a barcode. Do you see that little, it looks like zebra stripes? That's a barcode. So the machine already knows what it's gonna do. There's literally zero buttons you have to push except start. And then on here, if you don't know what you're about to do is it'll tell you. So this is a 7.7 .7 ounce. This is a coffee and you get the little coffee mug. So you see it, it's like, oh, okay, that's obvious. And then like this is a 2.7. So that's a double espresso. This one's delicious. The Bianco Ligero, super yummy. But my favorite, fa this one was disgusting. Don't get this one. Hazelnut muffin, Hazelino muffin, it's a coffee. Ugh, we didn't like that one at all, but it will taste good with like warm milk, I think, if we like kind of tweak it a little bit. Which one was the one? I think it was this one. Is this the one? Yes. The double espresso dulce is my favorite. It is so delicious and it's a 2.7. So it's a double espresso, which means you're gonna get like this much out. But if you put warm milk or even just a foam, if you just wanna frou-frou it up, it's awesome. So yeah, we did a little investment. It's our little Valentine's Day gift for us, for the house. So we're just still kind of playing with it, but it's been pretty exciting. I love the little pods and the machine is, uh, it has a little bit of like a learning curve to it because it's pretty, um, like stiff <laughs> that's what she said so it opens up like that you place the pod in here and then when you're done the pod slides down these little rails into this hole and this is the uh, the little trash can you can tell how many pods we <laughs> experimented with yesterday and then the little water tanks over here this is the um, the frother that we got and it's pretty cool because it has a uh, cool and hot uh, cool and hot hot and cold foaming or frothing what is that oh that's a reflection i was like is it dirty no i just washed it and then this is a magnet so the frother is magnetized so you can remove it real easy to wash i just rinse it with hot uh soapy water no scrubbing necessary but it's pretty cool i mean it froths up in a few seconds the coffee is done in an instant so like watch look how hard this is you have to push down really hard and you hear the click and then you lock it and then you can push the button and it starts. So I'll make something later to kind of show you if you've been on the fence. It's really cool, but it's very loud. I'll show you guys how we do that later. But right now, I wanna show you, well, I wanna show you Bumper first. Say good morning to your friends. Say hi, friends. How you doing? Are you still sleepy? This guy, he never wants to wake up in the morning. Oh, that's a big stretch. Oh, look at those stretchies. Oh, that's nice. The other day I saw a post on Instagram that said, there's two kinds of people in this world. Type number one that says, oh, look at that big stretch to all dogs and then sociopaths. <laughs> Isn't it true? Isn't it true you do little yoga poses? Yes, you do. You do little yoga poses. All right, so right now we are going to do our Mizen sponsorship, which is really exciting because I get to share one of my favorite anecdotes with you ever. I have never shared it on this channel and I can tell you that with certainty. So if any of you know Sue Wadsworth from San Diego, she was my babysitter. She was also my first job and I'm using air quotes a lot and I'm gonna explain why in a second. When I started school, my mom asked permission to a local district for us to be able to go to a certain school because the school that was right by where we lived was really, really dangerous. And that was something that parents did a ton and they still do it a ton in California. In doing so, she also wanted to learn English. So she signed up for one of those free programs. I think it was like Mac. I think it's called Mac or something like that. It was like a local community free program where she could learn English. And in order to do that, she had to go in earlier than our school started. So she found this local at-home babysitter, Sue. And she would leave us there early. I think it's like six or seven in the morning and school didn't start until later. And she would watch us just for a few hours and then we'd walk to school. So Sue was one of those women that saw the potential in everybody, like literal potential in everybody. Sue was one of those women that found everyone's sparkle, that found everyone's value, that found everyone's like 
specialness and she's just she's such a marvelous woman. I can close my eyes and I can still see her. I think it's those people like your kindergarten teacher, your very first babysitter that really make a difference in someone's life and you just never forget about them. She actually taught me how to cook, kind of. She was the first person that just let me play with the stove. She's like, you know what? She would watch all these babies. I think that's where my love for babies grew too, is she had a ton of babies. Like she watched probably like six or seven babies at a time. Obviously she had help. <laughs> she wasn't an octopus. She had help and she would let me help feed the babies. And some babies were like weaning off their bottles. So we'd make them like scrambled eggs or toast and things like that and she'd have me help her. Well, I was so nosy and I really wanted to help all the time that she was like, why don't you let me hire you? Instead of you coming here to be babysat, you can be my helper. You guys, she paid me $5 every two weeks. <laughs> When I think about it now, she would give me like an envelope with a $5 bill in it and I was like, bank. <laughs> but she'd give me $5 every two weeks. So I was making $10 a month <laughs> and I would make scrambled eggs, toast. I'd walk the younger kids to school. Keep in mind, I was like seven, okay? <laughs> I'd walk the littles to school and it was like a, I don't know, like it wasn't even a block. <laughs> it was just like walk out the door, walk into the school's fence, you know? So anyway, she was at first, I mean, to, to just be dramatic and gross about it, she was the first person that believed in me, point blank. You know, she gave me so much responsibility. She let me use her stove and she taught me how to make the perfect scrambled eggs. So I wanted to share that story with you guys because I know that you guys all have that special person or those few special people that first saw your sparkle, that first saw your potential, that just trusted you and taught you something important or helped you or you know held up the mirror and, and showed you how special you truly were. And so I wanna show you guys how to make scrambled eggs. And this is a running argument between my mother and I because she makes the worst, <laughs> sorry mom, she makes the worst scrambled eggs. You know what they look like? They look like breadcrumbs. Like what is this? Is this like, is, is this, <laughs> Is this like a mill? Are we, are we milling food? So her scrambled eggs are horrendous. And so I always would tell her, I'm like, mom, make scrambled eggs like Miss Sue. And she was like, I do it to Miss Sue, Miss Sue, Miss Sue. I'm like, mom, please, let me show you how to make eggs. Well, when I went to culinary school and we were learning kitchen basics, like, I don't know, the proper way to boil pasta and uh, how to make the perfect scrambled egg or the perfect poached egg, there was a whole like section on just eggs. I didn't want eggs for a long time after that. It turns out that the proper way to make eggs was the way that Sue taught me. So today we're gonna learn how to make eggs. And in order to do that the proper way, I highly suggest you have a nonstick pan. I am the brat, the obnoxious, I went to culinary school, stainless steel for life. You know, like that's me. I love stainless steel, I use it for everything, I believe in it. I can't imagine not having stainless steel in my home. However, I am still horrendously attached to a non-stick pan when it comes to making the perfect egg. So today we're gonna talk about it because I found one and I love her and you're probably gonna love her too. Are you ready? I think you are. So this is my non-stick pan. I feel like I should name her because she's like the only non-stick pan in my house. So we really like this, this, this little pan. She comes out only on two occasions. If I'm making fish or I'm making eggs, that's it. That's all the love she gets. But could you imagine you just have two purposes in someone's home, but you're that special that you need to exist. That's how important this pan is. The problem with nonstick pans though is they don't live forever. The other problem with nonstick pans is they can be full of like yucky chemicals. And the other problem with nonstick pans is they're super expensive and their life expectancy is very short. I have been through the ringer. You have heard me talk about trying to hunt down a nonstick pan that got discontinued. Do you remember that story? Okay, so then this little guy comes into my life. Obviously it has the basics, like the stay cool handle. It has this little silicone grip, which is nice. I mean, even if you didn't need to use it, you could pull it out. Like when I wash it, I take it off. You can see it's not even aligned right now. So it has a stay cool handle, the silicone grip, the underside of the silicone grip. This is like the, the stuff they think about. Do you see the little grippies? It has little grippies on the side, so it's easy to hold. It has a really good weight to it for a nonstick pan. Usually they're super, super lightweight and but very like cheap feeling. Not only is it great for searing, sauteing, cooking foods like fish and eggs, like I said, those are the only two reasons I use mine. It is a full 10 inches, just like the uh, stainless steel one that I've showed you guys before. And it is a PF 
OA free surface. What does that mean? I'm like, why am I throwing these initials and acronyms at you? Basically what it means is that it has a platinum coating for superior and long lasting release. That means that it's going to be non-stick for a lot longer than non-stick pans usually are. Have you ever had a non-stick pan that after a few months it stops being non-stick and you're like, I want my money back. That's not gonna happen with this guy here. So that's the reason I like it. So you're gonna have that long lasting release and then you're also gonna have uh, the primer on here that keeps the nonstick working properly for a longer period of time. Now keep in mind that with high quality cookware, they're gonna be really expensive. Well, this one's already about half of the cost of premium cookware and if you guys get it today along with, you know what I'm gonna talk about, their knives or, my other favorite, look at my little mise in drawer. Yeah, you guys jealous? I got my Dutch oven and then I also have the sautois. I use this at least once a week. This is my favorite. I think this one trumped the regular stainless skillet. Sorry, sorry mise I'm not supposed to say that, but that one, you need that one. <laughs> so for today, you guys can save 20% off your order and you can get free shipping if you spend $75 or more. I wanna make sure that I mention that every time I talk about mise because yeah, you're like, well, I don't have $75 to spend. That's fine. Wait until you do, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be working with Mizen for a very long time. But if you guys shop today, you're gonna to get 20% off your purchase. You get free shipping if you spend $75 or more, which means you gotta add a knife in there. You gotta add like a the satois in there. But if you get it and you're like, Danny was full of, then you can return it. You can return it for free, you can use it, you could try it, you can experiment with it. If you're like, this is not the kind of cookware that I need in my life, you could return it on their dime. I love when brands do that. I love when brands are so smug and so cocky that we're like, we're so good that if you don't like us, that won't happen by the way, you could send it back. <laughs> so who wants to make some scrambled eggs? I know, of all the things I could teach you, we're gonna make eggs. But you know what, it's 7.30 in the morning and sometimes you just gotta eat some fluffy eggs. And I'm sorry, mom, but we're not gonna make the, the eggs the way, the way you make them. Just, does anyone else? Maybe it's a Mexican mom thing, where they like mash up the eggs into tiny little tootle pieces. Like for me, scrambled eggs have to be like lumpy and really moist. People hate that word, but you know what? When it comes to eggs, they need to be very lumpy. I know at restaurants, they use two things, two secret ingredients, not together, separately, depending on the restaurant you go to, but some of them will add a splash of pancake batter to their eggs, and other places will add a splash of either milk, half and half, or heavy cream to make them fluffy. We're just gonna add milk, because we're not that fancy, but hey, it makes a huge difference. Do you want to make some levels? All right, you guys, the most important life lesson you're going to learn in your life. I think making eggs is such a big deal, don't you think? Because it's such an easy way to feed yourselves in the morning or for a snack. And it's just coagulating proteins. It's not rocket science, okay? So we're going to turn on the burner on high just for a few seconds, just to warm it up really quick. One of my favorite things about Misen cookware is that it retains heat very well and very evenly. Have you ever used a skillet that is just... I don't know, maybe too big. It's a big skillet and there's like a hot point here and then the outside's cool. I don't know what it is about the fabrication of Misen uh, cookware that the heat is so even, it doesn't matter what side of the skillet you're touching, it will stay hot. So it's gonna be hot here, 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 here. You're not gonna have a hot spot. So you saw how little it was on high. We're just gonna turn it down to maybe like a medium, medium low, so that when we put our butter in the pan, it doesn't burn. Oh yes, we're cooking with butter. But if you don't wanna cook with butter, you could obviously use avocado oil or even coconut oil. That's a good substitute for that. We just have some cracked eggs here, simple, simple. And it's so interesting because a few little things that you do to your eggs and it makes the biggest difference. It's a splash of milk, and the way you cook them. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt. We're trying to decrease our salt intake because I've had really high blood pressure recently. And we're also trying to decrease our saturated fat intake because someone in our family has high cholesterol at the moment. But obviously these are all issues that just come with age. <laughs> We're just dealing with aging gracefully right now. So why not eat some huevos? Look how cute this little uh, whisk is. Look at this one. Oh my goodness, you know, it's, it's, 
You know you're getting older when you see the value in these little kitchen tools. So punch your yolks. You want to pierce them so that you're not just whipping them back and forth. You actually want to cut into the yolk. Whisk them up, break up the yolk, and you break up the egg white. We're mixing the two together. We have some salt and we have some milk. <laughs> you can add half and half if you want them to be a lot creamier and richer. Like I said, you could add a, a splash of pancake batter, but it can't be pancake powder. It has to be batter. The batter has to already be mixed together, like your Bisquicks or whatever. And it's just a splash, literally like a tablespoon. So that's fully combined. And then you're going to take a stick of butter. And this is where it's like, oops, it's not as healthy as it could have been, but that's okay because it makes them taste delicious. So you're gonna peel your stick of butter and coat the bottom of the pan pretty evenly, but you don't have to overdo it. Like it just has to be a very thin layer of butter. Raise your temperature just a little bit because you're going in with cold eggs in a, in a hot pan. So cold, hot, lukewarm. You don't want to do that. You want to hold the temperature. So we're going to go in with our cold eggs into the skillet. Leave them alone. Turn your heat down a little bit. Got to make sure you get the cinnamon rolls in there, you know, in the shot. You got to make sure he's, he's our kitchen mascot. Do you see the bubbles in the center and then the outside is looking kind of dry? So when that happens, you bring your eggs in, 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 and you let all the raw egg run its way out. When it starts drying out again, you do the same thing. In, in, in. Do you see how it's coagulating here? Coagulating just means you're cooking the protein. Just let it hang out again. Bring it in. So there's no stirring involved. You're kind of just shoving. Shoving them from side to side and getting all that raw egg to be in direct contact with the actual heat of the skillet. So all of this here is almost done. Once you don't have any more like significant runny egg, you can either cut your eggs and then flip them. If you're good with your skillet, you can kind of do the, you know, where you flip it in the air. That's usually what I do. And then you just kind of let them just kind of dry out. That's the perfect way of saying it. You're letting the eggs dry out. What you're trying to do is create like masses of egg, not little pieces. Even if you are making eggs for say your baby or your toddler and they're learning so you can't give them a giant lump, you could still break this up, but you're not drying out your protein. You're not making it dry and hard or brittle. You know what I mean? So pull it off the heat immediately. Always pull it off the heat immediately. Even if you're done cooking, move it to a cool burner. Do not leave it on the hot burner or it will continue cooking and it will dry out. Do you guys see the sheen that the eggs have? And this is all stuff that Sue taught me. Isn't that crazy? So you see the sheen that's on the outside of the egg? That's what you wanna see. They're fully cooked, but they're not dried out. They're not gonna taste like sandpaper. And that's exactly what you want. So then when you are ready to serve these, you can kind of portion it out. We made six eggs, so imagine this is six, and you can kind of visualize how many you wanna do. All right, you guys, scrambled egg, taste test. No, Mern, you're not included in this taste test unless mommy drops it. Mm. How many of you guys grew up with the, um, with like the sandy scrambled eggs? Anybody? Look, look at my strong hand. I'm left-handed. This is why it looks weird. <laughs> How many of you guys grew up with that? Like the sandy scrambled eggs. We need a support group. We need a support group where we all start like the I love lumpy scrambled eggs support group. Here's the thing. A lot of people don't like their eggs like this. They don't like them lumpy. They don't like them in, in big like that. But this is the benefit. The benefit is when it comes to like the science aspect of it, it doesn't dry out the eggs, so it doesn't change the flavor. A lot of people do not like eggs because of the texture that they have experienced when it comes to eggs. Most people, it's the smell, but that's one thing. The other thing is that if you are using eggs to put them on a vessel, like a tortilla, toast, or a sandwich, or a wrap, 
it's a lot easier to get this kind of egg into it without it lumping and spilling out than the one in little pieces. Another benefit is if you're teaching your baby how to eat, you can create egg like this and give it to them in like strips, smaller lumps, bigger lumps, so that they're, you know, they're working either on their pincer grasp or they're not choking. The egg itself isn't dried out, so it's not gonna get stuck in their little throats. It's very moist, it's delicious, it's super tender. I know it's a weird word to use, for eggs is tender, but it is a protein, just like chicken breast, just like steak, so you wanna make sure that you keep it tender or your family's not gonna enjoy it. Anyway, speaking of family enjoying it, uh, we are going to eat these delicious, fluffy, oh my gosh. Make sure you guys don't over salt your eggs. They don't eat that much salt. They have so much flavor already. Mm. And if you're cooking with butter, butter usually has a lot of salt. So you don't need that either. Anyway, we're gonna make these into tacos and uh, with this delicious little grocery store salsa we found. It's like a creamy salsa that's delicious. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up breakfast for Parker and I and we're gonna make some Nespresso. But if you guys wanted to check out Mise and don't forget that today you guys can get 20% off your purchase. You get free shipping if you spend $75. And my recommendations are always gonna be the same. The chef's knife, the 10 inch nonstick, and the 10 inch stainless. And if you're feeling fancy or bouge, you definitely need the satwa. And the satwa for me is so valuable. Anyway, all the information for Mizen will be listed in the description box below. If you have a special person in your life that saw your sparkle, that saw your potential, that completely changed your life, and you're like, man, if this person could live forever, it would be, let us know in the comment section below. I don't know, call them. If they're still around, call them, remind them, send them a text, an email. You guys, Sue Wadsworth, and uh, Miss Cohen, my first grade teacher. She was the only teacher that didn't get frustrated with me because I didn't speak English. She said that it was a talent and that it was going to become very useful in my future. And I was like, oh. And I guess she was right, but at the same time, even if she was wrong, she was kind, you know? And you never forget someone that's kind. For, why am I emotional right now? Why am I, you know what? Grief is turning me into a wuss. <laughs> Let me shake it off. I'm a thug, okay, I'm tough. Everybody that knows me very personally would know that all of that is wrong. <laughs> I'm perpetually a wuss and I'm, I'm emo and I cry about everything, it's just who I am. I can't change it. You know I'm just gonna go eat my eggs. <laughs>
Three weeks sounds like a long time, so I moved her appointment up for two. And if she still doesn't have any improvement, I'll definitely bring her in, but I'll ask to see the other vet. So there's two vets at this location. I like them both. So maybe a second opinion doesn't hurt nobody. You know what I mean? Anyway, so that's the one thing. Number one is prayers for Sophie. Just wanna make sure that we have our little sunshiny, sassy girl back. You know, I miss that. There's already, there's already so much absence without Topo and his coughing and, you know, the little nugget, like trying to kill everybody. So I can't deal with another, like, change in my routine, especially when it comes to my dogs and just how significant their presence is in my daily life because I work from home and I'm here all day long with them, you know? So that's number one. Number two is I have a super important medical appointment for myself today at four o'clock. I'm very excited. I'm very hopeful. I think I'll get some good answers. I'm not sick or dying or anything like that. Thankfully, knock on wood, everything's good, but I've just kind of been navigating. I told you guys that I was given an antidepressant in September. That's why all the weight gain and all the puffy rotundousness that's happening. I know that's not a word, but whatever. Just, just, just keep, just keep, stay on track with me here. Anyway, and so that was the wrong answer. And I knew going in that was the wrong answer. Like that is not who I am. That's not how I feel. That's, that just, just felt like a wrong thing for me. You know, like a depression, anxiety diagnosis. Like definitely anxiety, but depression. I didn't. I don't consider myself a person that suffers from depression. However, I do consider myself a person that could become depressed if other things aren't, I'm coming. I was just telling them how you're not sassy anymore and you're yelling at me on the internet. Hey, excuse me. Did you just yell at me? Why are you yelling at your mother? Excuse me. Ma'am, ma'am. Did you just yell at me with your beard? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Is it because you're so pretty? Is it because you're so, so pretty? Look at this face. Oh my goodness. I just want you to feel better because you're my sunshine. Yes, you are. Anyway, so I do have a history of depression in my family, but I was just like, I'm not, I don't suffer from depression. However, I do think I'm experiencing some of it because of other things that aren't being acknowledged or treated. You know what I mean? So anyway, I have a really important appointment today. So prayers for Danny, <laughs> selfishly. So pray for me, pray for my dog. The other thing is I need to show you something. And if this isn't something that excites you, if this isn't something that you find appealing, if this isn't something that you find sexy, incredibly attractive, or very, very stimulating, I'm not quite sure that we could really be friends in real life because I'm kind of weird. And stuff like this for me is like a second marriage. You know what I mean? Just, just. So I'm about to reveal something to you that if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen. If you don't, you saw this earlier in the vlog and you were like, whoa. I can't deal with that mess. Just take a moment. I mean, right? I told you guys earlier in this vlog that we ordered two organizers, one for pods, one for K-cups. And uh, this one here, I'll show you guys. It's a hard plastic, like a hard acrylic. So it's kind of like a little table. You see that? It's like a little table. And the little table has a little circular cutouts, so you just go plop and so it's hard and this one comes in clear and white as well but only in this dimension then we got this one here and this is black and foam and it only comes in black and foam that's it but it comes in like 10 or 15 different dimensions so if you have smaller drawers like we got these beast drawers on purpose when we redid the kitchen because I love big drawers but if you guys have different drawers or standard size drawers or whatever they have different sizes of these little foamy guys I don't know if you guys can tell but these pods are all different widths or chubbiness these are espressos here I think these are double espressos and then these are coffee so these also fit I just didn't have enough room <laughs> so we got the littlest one then we got the mediums here, and then we got the Fatty Magoo, and they all fit in here, which is pretty cool. It has these little slits, these little slits where they kind of lock into place, but if you're lazy and you just want to do this, that works too. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys because I showed you the before, and usually I'm really bad at remembering the after. So, 
after. Ta-da! And my last and my number four is if you guys are interested in checking out Mizen, remember that the offer is like for a super limited amount of time. So if you've been curious about their cookware, if you want to get the nonstick pan because you want to learn how to make perfect scrambled eggs, sorry mom, or you wanna get some new knives or whatever, the promo is for a short period of time, but you do get 20% off, and if you spend over $75, you get free shipping. Remember, no obligation. If you get it and hate it and then hate me afterwards, it's okay. You can get your money back. <laughs> you can send it back on their dime. You don't even have to pay for return shipping. So anyway, I'll have the information for the Mizen promo in the description box below, so you can just click over on it, and then it's just automatic. But that's it. That's it for this vlog. If you guys have an extra two minutes to send us some good vibes, I think it's unfair to complain about anything at this moment. We've had a good turnaround and things are looking up, but ultimately, keep in mind that we never know what's going on behind closed doors. And I wanted to include that little bit with Parker. Usually when he has those, those moments, I just remove that um, section of the vlog like I just toss it all together this has happened before where he's just not feeling it and Parker he's a Virgo Virgos are generally very nice very sweet very helpful severe overthinkers but they're moody you know and sometimes I annoy him a lot of times <laughs> and so I wanted to include it not to pick on him not to put off some blast because I know I'm gonna get the comments where it's like oh my god Parker is so perfect Parker's an angel and you're such a just like in last weekend's vlog, and I told you, this is real life. Mental load, stress, same thing. Relationships aren't perfect. People aren't perfect. Couples fight. They get on each other's nerves. You have seasons where you don't even like each other, but guess what? That doesn't mean you don't love them. <laughs> So if you're having a moment where your significant other isn't your favorite person in the world right now, that's normal, don't worry. If you're having a moment right now where everything he does, like breathing, chewing, existing, is driving you crazy, it is normal. Because yes, Parker is delicious, and he is so handsome, and he is so smart, and he is such a good dad to my boys, but sometimes I can't stand the look of his face because that is life. It happens in romantic relationships, it happens in friendships, it happens with family members, it's normal. I don't know why this turned into like a TED Talk soapbox rant, but anyway. I felt like I needed to do a little bit of a why before people start to freak out because I think the internet lets us believe that, you know, our opinions matter all the time, and they really don't. <laughs> but Considering you only see a fraction of people's lives, especially if they're like vlogging, it's important to like show the normal stuff, you know, not just the, oh my God, like the amount of comments that I get where people are like, where can I find myself a Parker? It's like, well, you find yourself a Parker, but then you continue to develop this person and make it work in your lives like in a symbiotic fashion. So like certain things that he used to do, he doesn't do anymore. Certain things that I used to do, I don't do anymore. You know, things that are better for us, we change or we do, you know, so it's like, you can't go out there and find a Parker. Like you, you go out there and you find a man that you like, and then together you become each other's Parker, you know, like what you see. But ultimately people are annoying. People get on your nerves. We all have bad days and it's normal, and I wanted to show some normalcy. And Parker doesn't know I did that, so when he, when he sees it, he's probably gonna find out because of the nosy in our lives, and, and that'll be okay. Then he'll like me less in the next vlog, but I'll, I'll probably put it in, in that vlog too. I don't know, it's just, I think it's a Sagittarius thing. You know, I think it's like a, I think it's like a Sagittarius slash ADHD slash I'm an asshole combo, and can't really say I want to do anything about it, you know? <laughs> anyway, I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys!